Hi, it's day, it's day uh, 33 of 40 days of tenderness. Um, and today has been a really, um, a deep day. I, I still have a lot of questions, so I'm actually hoping that as I talk, insights come. Um, so 33 is a significant number for me. It's like the Christ year and when I turned 33, I was like sure that, oh, this is the year I'm going to like break through because I felt that way, not just because of the Christ thing, but uh, I'm 37 now and um, I, s I feel like it's going to happen now, but I kind of say that every year. Um, it just feels so eminent and like the energy is always really intense for me. Uh, like I, I really do feel like there's something trying to break through and um, and I honestly believe it's, it's going to be this year, so we'll see. Um, Maybe we'll see it together. So sometimes, like, metaphors become so prevalent or, like, ubiquitous in your life that it gets kind of weird. And that's what's happening for me with this whole, like, butterfly thing. And I know it's a kind of a hackneyed, like, thing. Like, oh, yeah, we all transform like the butterfly. But it's so apt. I mean, it's so apt. And it keeps coming up. So, um, let me see how many ways I can describe that right now. So, uh, a few months ago, I made this, um, you might have heard of the ritual of like marrying yourself, committing to yourself um, first, because uh, you know, you got to love yourself before you can love anyone else. So, um, I like the idea of committing to love itself. Um, and so I was like looking for a ring, like I, I had this idea for years because I heard about it somewhere and I was like, I like that idea. And I actually also thought, because I'm so not good with when people approach me and how to handle it. So I was like, well, if I'm, if I'm wearing a ring that looks like a wedding ring, people will think I'm married. Like that really would make a difference. Um, so I was always kind of like on the lookout for a ring that I would like and that I was going to consider my wedding ring. And um, never found anything that I liked enough. And then one day I just said, you know, I have to do this. I want to do this ritual. And I'm being a perfectionist about like trying to get it right. It's about the meaning. So I found this ring and it was a, a ring that I've had. It's, it was, used to be my mom's. And I didn't really like it. It's not my style, but it was, um, I put it on and it fit my ring finger perfectly. And it's, it's this, it's a butterfly. And at the time, uh, I thought, oh yeah, sure. You know, the butterfly metaphor, like I'm going to spread my wings and all that. Um, but that was in November and, um, it's really going strong in in January, I, I ended up uh, doing this um, kind of sketch about my inner child, for my inner child. And it was um, kind of like asking what would, you know, guide me through, throughout the year, what would help me, animals. And I ended up drawing this like kind of kid version of a, of a red dragon and, uh, and a butterfly. And I didn't interpret it much then. I just thought, oh, okay, like, yeah, I've always liked dragons and the butterfly thing. Um, and then... So this idea of being held, right? So with the tenderness, uh, what comes keeps coming back is, is for me is like wanting to feel held and kind of allowing myself to recognize that that the mother, the universe is holding me, that I don't need to worry and fight. And um, and so this idea of cocooning, of especially in a delicate, vulnerable time, like I feel like I'm in right now, um, especially, to feel like, like there's a safe place for me to, that I'm contained, you know, and, um, And this uh, this <laughs> this anime um, cartoon that I was into when I was in high school uh, came back to me recently, and it was um, it's called Vampire Princess Miu, and she's a a girl vampire that her job is to take back demons into the underworld. They're like She's pretty much saving the earth. But she has a lot of um, personal sadness because um, she 
is a vampire, so she's immortal. And so she, you know, ends up building relationships with people because she's saving people. And then, you know, inevitably she has to, like, watch them die or she has to leave and do her next mission. And um, so she's always alone. Um, like, oh, uh, yeah, it reminds me of that Lord of the Rings thing, right? Like, to Frodo, like, to be a ring bearer means to be alone. Um, yeah, a lot of times on these tasks we have, uh, it is done in isolation. Um, but it doesn't mean that you're not supported. And this is like what I'm playing with. How can we be on a unique path that really does require you to be alone? Or like a lot of creativity comes from your relationship with the divine, which you can't kind of always do with other people. But yet it do it has this other side where it, it is meant to be shared and you are meant to have support on the path, even if the task itself is meant for you to do alone. Um, anyway, so her only like, um, steady kind of it's a, her servant actually but it's also her confidant is this um, figure that doesn't speak um, and has no face he wears a mask but he protects her I, I, he like she kind of when she's done her mission she kind of he wraps her and and then she's kind of like like let's go like take me away and sometimes he protects her if she needs help and just that feeling of being like, God, just totally having someone wrap you up, you know, and like, like swaddle you like a, like a baby. Um, I, I just, uh, I, lo I long for that. And, um, and I had this dream last night where, um, I was at some high school party and, uh, people were doing drugs and I was kind of excited. Um, I like, I like lots of recreational drugs, but I haven't done them in a while. And I have like a love hate relationship with it because I, um, I also like being like really clear and, um, but I like experimenting and I like having different sensations. So, um, so I often have dreams like that, but this time, <laughs> This guy had something and then he said, yeah, there are these leaves, but you know They grow into something and you have to eat them and what happened was these these leaves started turning into like is one turned into this really really big red caterpillar and This guy ate it, but he could only eat half of it because it was so like well, just like thick and And it was disgusting and I was like, I don't want to do that and um and when I woke up, I was like, what does that mean? Like, do I, am I, is that fear? Like, but it's like a drug. It's like, I shouldn't want to do this. Isn't that like progress that I don't want to do that? Um, so I don't know what that means. But, and then there was a part where there was a man and a son in the water. And, and it was about like taking pictures underwater and how if you get yourself a camera that can take pictures underwater, then it gives you uh, all of this, um, uh, not flexibility, it, it offers you a lot of opportunity to capture, um, this whole other world. And it was showing like him and his son hugging in all these positions underwater. And that meant nothing to me, but as I'm saying it now, um, so I see water as, um, you know, like the emotions and the unconscious often. So it's like if you have a camera or a lens, right? A way of seeing, a way of capturing. A way of seeing that can allow you to uh, capture what's happening. Um, yeah, then maybe it provides some kind of insight. It's really funny. Yeah, because my I, I, I went to dance class today and afterwards I, I gave my dance teacher a ride somewhere and she was talking about a talk at this Gandhi museum where a physicist was talking about an, an actual old camera, the way it works and um, using it as um, a metaphor, but almost not a metaphor. It was like, like a literal, um, a very specific analogy to, uh, to the way we perceive the, and the way we, our perception influences the way we experience life. Anyway, so, um, and 
And then today, um, so I did a reading and um, yeah, the card I pulled today was receptivity. Hathor, allow yourself to receive, you know. And so I was kind of honestly like expecting a day of like gifts, you know, that I could experience as gifts. Um, Cause of course every day is a gift. Um, and it didn't feel like that. I felt really like, so I had this reading scheduled and then my dance teacher wanted, asked me for a ride and um, I wanted to give it to her. And then I had, so I had to reschedule the reading. And so then I ended up feeling like pretty busy and I'm, I'm fasting. So like, I don't really want to feel busy. Um, and then, you know, it was, it was snowing today here. It's like spring and it's snowing, which I actually kind of like, but uh, it was cold and, and the, and the reading, um, was good and it was very intense. There was like a lot of energy movement. Um, and then when I went to pick up my dance teacher, yeah, a nice thing was, uh, she has a beautiful, beautiful yard and beautiful home and she wanted to pick some flowers for this at the meditation museum, they were having a, like a seven year anniversary. And and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to that. I was thinking I'll do this reading and then kind of go late if I want to and stop by and see. But my dance teacher wanted to go and since she wanted to ride, like I ended up going on time. And when, I, when, we, when we arrived there, this is what the flowers were for, when we arrived there, I just realized I didn't want to be there. It was, um, you know, like they were having it's like a series of talks and presentations and I was kind of like, I was trying to be open, but I was kind of like, why am I here? I'm tired. I don't, I didn't feel like I was really receiving anything and I was really practicing like, okay, there's a reason why you're here. You're receiving something, like be open to receiving. And I started to feel like sensations in my body that felt really good. I mean, all the people there are really good people and, and the, yeah, the energy was good. I just, I guess I just kept thinking like, I was maybe expecting something or I felt like maybe I, I should be speaking and that I was listening to all these people speak that didn't feel that, um, that didn't feel all that like inspiring to me or, or like substantive. I mean, which I'm sure someone from there is going to watch this and be like, you're a little egotistical brat. Um, yeah, I mean, everything was good. It just, I didn't feel like I was necessarily like receiving all that from much from it. Um, although the the like mother of the center she's like this beautiful person and yeah i guess just being around her was nice um yeah so by the end of it uh, like my dance teacher also wanted to leave early because she had to do her taxes but they called her up to the front you know because they they know her and respect her which is sweet so she couldn't leave early so we ended up staying like the whole time and then and everyone's eating all this good food around me and i was just um like you know yeah, I was just struggling because I really, really was trying to be present, but noticing how like my ego was coming up and I was feeling irritated and I didn't want to see it as a waste of time, but I kind of kept feeling like it was. And I was like, what's the message here? Is the message that like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go anyway. And then I kind of probably only went because my dance teacher wanted to go. And, um, yeah, so I, uh, we left, I got home and then I just felt, um, like, so I just, this class is supposed to start on Wednesday and I felt like I needed to know like what's happening with it and like maybe I need to send out, you know, another, um, just send out something to um, a few people that I thought would be into it to say like, hey, do you want to do this or not? Because um, I actually ran into a few women that I know would be interested, but they were like, oh yeah, I haven't had time to check the email yet, which is not unusual. But, um, yeah, and it was just that line of, like, not knowing, you know, don't want to push people at all. Um, but if it feels right and sometimes, the, I mean, the reason why people would benefit from a class like this is because they need to remember that it's important to, like, check in with themselves, you know, and and they might need encouragement to do that, so... It's like how when people are in like that kind of frenetic pace where they don't have time for anything, how do you kind of snap them out of that um, later? <laughs>